And remember, folks, you can live with Trevor in Paradise Earth. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Bibles on the Bench. My name is Trevor. I'm your host on this amazing show. And as many of you know from our previous videos and associations here, <laughs> association, another JW type word, um, that I was a witness from 1990 until 1997 when luckily I left the Jehovah's Witnesses and had a life. <laughs> Get a life, as William Shatner would say in that infamous Saturday Night Live sketch from long ago. <laughs> when he was at the Star Trek convention. <laughs> you, sir, get a life. Have you ever kissed a girl? <laughs> what a, that was funny. Okay, anyway. Um, so, as you recall from previous weeks here, I went on holiday, basically run down went to my parents' place back from where I was from originally, and I got my old witness nonsense back in my hands, and I've been reviewing them. So last last week, we were looking at videotapes and the first box, and now we're looking at the second box of good old books that I used to have as a Jehovah's Witness from that time period. So... We start off this box with, now, I don't want to, you know, terrify any of you, but the first book is my book of Bible horror stories. This was the one that many XJW witnesses have a, have a big struggle with. Ah, ha ha, I found an answer to last week's question. <laughs> So this is the one that most of the uh, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses struggle with because this was the first book they ever got. And, I mean, here's here's the imagery and stuff like that in this thing, eh? Jerusalem is destroyed is the title of that. And, I mean, look at this picture. This is, this is what kids, JW kids, had to, to look. I mean... Look at the suffering people here. Look at how far back they're lined up. Look at the anger in this guy. You know, that's pure hatred right there, you know? And and this is what is in this book. Like, this book is rife, if you want to use that word, with these kind of imageries. Like, there's God helping King Hezekiah by killing off all the the, the dudes. Like... Look at that, you know? Black and white. Uh, dead people lying all over here. This is what JWs teach their kids. Like, kids of four. <sighs> you know, this kind of stuff, eh? <clears throat> and to think, I've got one of these that I was going to teach my kids with. You know, when I was a witness, I was looking forward to having kids so I could show them this book and teach them the ways of Jehovah from, uh, you know, ah, uh, boy, from infancy. <clears throat> like, my goodness. Yeah, okay, I know, I know these are Bible stories, right? But there is a way to tell them, and then there's a way, you know, tell them, to uh, <clears throat> to teach a story and to you know help kids out, and then there's a way to tell them to terrify the hell out of your kids so that they will not leave the witnesses. And this, there's God destroying the Egyptians, you know, because the Egyptians, you know, and there's your Moses there. Sorry, I'm kind of trying to duck around here. There he is. This is what they were teaching the kids. You know, back when this came out. There's all the Egyptians getting destroyed. Look at how much fun they're having being wiped out of existence. You know, if you're not good, that's what God's going to do to you. You know? And then we have... Oh yeah, like the great old... Good old story. 
Dinah gets in trouble. Remember this, guys? You know? You know what that one's about. You remember. And again, here's the thing to teach the kids, you know? Like, the world is evil, it's us against them. That's... that's how this goes. Ah, uh, boy. Boy, oh boy. Sorry to bring this up to you guys. Whew! What do I have in here, eh? Huh. Oh, and there's... there's a great flood. More people getting wiped out. You know? It's good, but they're all evil, you know. That's your lesson for the day, kids. Okay, so I was saying about uh, about last week's mystery that I had. There it is. Listening to the great teacher, I was correct. For you guys that wrote it in the comments, thank you. Um, this is the English version. Again, another book I never read because I was collecting these to teach to the kids. Copyright 1971. Original printing, 29 million copies. Worldwide. There you go again. Children who praise God. Be good, kids. Be good. Because... The other book shows you what happens when you're not good. Okay, here we go. Our incoming world government. God's kingdom. Here's another classic old gem that uh, printed 1977. Dedicated to the God whose happy time has come to replace man's disastrous rulership of himself with the righteous government for which heart-sick people of all races have longed. Oh. <laughs> Taken from the New World Translation 1971 edition. Huh, this would be complete. Oh, here we go. Look what I turned to. More of that destruction. Destruction! Therefore, amount to 7 times 360 days, or 2,520 days, from, well, se well 7 lunar years, or 2,520 days, after Jerusalem's destruction in 607 BCE. Five, what was it? 539 BCE was the actual destruction. Holy Spirit, the force, the force behind the coming new world order. Holy Spirit is propelling the new world order. Dedicated to the almighty being whose active force makes certain the bringing in shortly of a righteous new order for the everlasting good and happiness of all lovers of a clean, safe, and peaceful earth. Hmm. Yeah, except when that new earth comes in, of course, everybody has to be murdered. <laughs> well, anyway, you know what I mean. The first one anointed with Holy Spirit and power. Oh. Ha! I happen to have the commentary on the letter of James. This is one of those great ex-Jehovah's Witness books that, uh, 1979, that we all love to come out here and read. Oh, look at that. I was even starting to study this thing. Ah, now that's interesting. Hm. James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes that are scattered about, greetings. Huh. Boy, they really give a big, huge commentary on this thing. James, the Christian Greek scriptures mention four persons by this name. The father of faithful apostle Judas. The brother of the apostle John. The apostle who was the son of Alphaeus. The son of Joseph and Mary and half-brother of Jesus. 
The writer of the letter of James was evidently not the father of the Apostle Judas, not Iscariot, as there is no record that Judas followed. Holy smokes! <laughs> this goes on and on and on. It's like, wow. I don't know. Okay. Sorry, I'm taking a bit of time with this. Your youth. <laughs> Watchtower sucking out the best years of it. No, uh, your youth getting the best out of it is <laughs> what this one's entitled. Again, I, I got a lot of the, the books for the kids. <laughs> okay, um, because I wanted to teach my kids proper spiritual, scriptural, whatever, from Watchtower. From Watchtower book. Ah. <sighs> The music and dancing you choose. Hmm. Page 124. Boy, I've got a lot of these. I, I, you know, when I started this YouTube channel, I was doing the, um, oh, what's that blue book called? Your, oh, Bible questions or whatever, right? I've got it in some of my playlists, but I didn't realize how many of these kids books I have. I could actually just do a whole teardown on why kids should not be in the Watchtower. <laughs> yeah. Music and dancing you choose. Now this is this is kind of a funny read because you know, back in the nineties <clears throat> Jehovah's Witnesses are not like we're not like what you are now in you know, 2019, where you go to the Kingdom Hall and everybody stands up and they have a big hoedown, pokey do, you know, uh, boot stomping boogie, you know, and all this kind of whatever going on in the Kingdom Hall. And I've seen those videos on YouTube. At the end, they have like a big whatever and they're listening to worldly music and the whole thing. But <laughs> ah, this is funny. There you go choice in dancing over here uh page 125 paragraph or you know yeah paragraph four choice in dancing there is a wide variety of dances from graceful waltzes to lively polkas there are latin american congas rumbas and sambas also merengues Bigui, I don't know, and bossa novas, many of those having an African background. There is also rock and roll as well as more recent dances. Is there good reason why you might have objection to certain of these dances? There is, there is, if the dance arouses you sexually and brings a temptation to commit sexual immorality, it could cause you many problems. Ancient fertility dances, for example, were designed to incite sexual passions, and certain modern dances have been reminiscent of these. Some years ago, Time Magazine, Time Itself Magazine, a worldly magazine. I mean, this is a bad standard for the world. They observed the twist at first was an innocent enough dance, but the youngsters at, bracket, a certain New York nightclub, bracket, so that Watchtower won't get <laughs> accused of naming anybody, have reviewed the twist and parodied it, it parodied it into a replica of some ancient tribal puberty rite. Really? <laughs> Time wrote that? Uh, many dances in recent years have been variants of the twist. The dancers do not touch, but the hips and shoulders may gyrate. <laughs> In sexually suggestive ways, a young person's passions may be easily aroused by watching a body perform these gyrations. <laughs> a girl, for example, may not think anything about it because, hey, you know, girls don't think, according to Watchtower. <sighs> Simply being caught up in the movements of the dance. She's totally innocent and oblivious of everything, just swaying around erotically to the twists. <laughs> uh, but she shouldn't ignore the effects on onlookers and on what they might think of her, as this letter to the editor of the New York Times magazine observes, the New York Times now, let's hope that the young and not-so-young bodies of our twisters are lying, that their minds do not behave inside 
the way their pelvises and pectorals do outside. Come on, Watchtow, you just perverts here. My God, I'm not going to read the rest of this. <laughs> but my point is that they're saying all this in this book. And yet, if you go into a kingdom hall now, at the end of the meeting, you get to gyrate to the twist. Ha ha! Take that. True peace and security from what source? Not Watchtower. Organized to accomplish our ministry. Organized to accomplish our brainwashing. Organized to accomplish new recruits. Actually, this... I think was the one that is this the one okay right in the comment section below sorry I might have found the answer here but right in the comment section below was this book only available to was it either baptized publishers or was it only available to um, missionaries and pioneers write in the comments below if you remember because I might have something here I'm not supposed to have you know organized to accomplish our ministry is published for Jehovah's Witnesses it draws attention to our basic scriptural responsibilities by reading it you will get an overall view of how the Christian congregation operates today in addition to preaching the good news of the kingdom worldwide, our aim is to help, <laughs> help, those thousands of people newly associating with us. Many of them desire to meet the scriptural requirements for becoming dedicated and baptized witnesses of Jehovah. They too need to become familiar, need to become familiar with Jehovah's organization and how to share the kingdom good news with others. To that end, information has been included in this book that especially is especially beneficial to such persons. <clears throat> General information here is published concerning the duties of elders and ministerial servants, judicial procedures, and various features of congregation organization. Details regarding these matters are reviewed from time to time in the Watchtower, Our Kingdom Ministry, and other publications of the Society. Liars! <laughs> it is our prayer that the reading and application of what is contained in this publication will bring Jehovah's blessing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm supposed to really be having this book. I can't remember what the rules were on it. But that's interesting. I have it. <laughs> okay. Choosing the best way of life, not Watchtower. <laughs> Anything other than Watchtower is the best way of life. Okay, so... Good news for all nations, the same. This one was kind of neat, though. You have... It's got, like, the, the message in all these different languages. So if you meet somebody, you just ha handed them the book, you know, somebody speaking this language and you don't speak it, you just hand it to them. That's Persian, There's Polish, Romanian, Russian, Portuguese, but we want English. You can live forever in happiness on earth. It does not seem possible to enjoy happiness on earth for even a short time. Everything sucks. Would you like to learn more? I'll be glad to obtain some Bible crapiola from our Watchtower back books. Okay, and there's Examining the Scriptures from 1996. Carrying on, we have our 1995 Yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses. I like that purple color. <laughs> I'll just take the purple off. Examining the Scriptures Daily, 96. And of course, orange, Halloween. Halloween, it is cool. Examining the Scriptures Daily from 92. Yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses, 97. And... Huh, I had three copies of this. The one that I had in my previous videos before I got these boxes with the ripped out middle section. This one is my replacement Bible for that one. 
it too has sort of started to to rip out but again so I had this one the little pocket one and the other one that ripped up and I also now have the new 2013 silver sword edition what am I thinking okay so these are some books that didn't fit in the box the Jehovah's Witnesses Proclaimers of God's Kingdom. This book. <laughs> this great book right here. You know, this this is a great study thing because it talks about like all, all the conventions and stuff that went on. The, the time of of great testing there we go 1914 to 1918 and uh, it basically lies <laughs> to uh, to the Jehovah's Witnesses and like watchtower here is is is, is going right back patting themselves on the back for for technically being there since creation or having the need to be on earth since the beginning of creation the watchtower bible and tract society look at that why should jehovah have witnesses there's adam and eve in the garden of eden this is why jehovah needs jehovah's witnesses mm -hmm. <sighs> Nineteen ninety-three. Now, Watchtower, to my understanding, has never made a book like this ever again, because it's very easy to. Uh... Now, Jehovah's Witnesses would never question doing this, of course, because they're they're good witnesses. But for us XJWs, it's very easy to read this, right? Read through this, and then go online and type in. What did Charles Taze Rutherford do in 1917, for example? Why were, why were the brothers thrown in jail in 1918? And you will find the actual newspaper articles, and you will learn why they got thrown in jail in 1918. Not from the fluff and duff they're talking about in here, but the actual hardcore facts. Humans can choose to benefit from, from Jehovah's sovereignty. Check this out. But first they must hear about it. That's that's the reasoning in this history of Jehovah's Witnesses. Abel was the first witness of Jehovah. <laughs> he had a no blood card. <laughs> oh boy. Enoch bore witness about God's judgment against the ungodly. Noah was a preacher of righteousness before God destroyed the world by means of a deluge. He was also a Jehovah's Witness. So was Moses and Aaron. They were all Jehovah's Witnesses. Jesus Christ was a Jehovah's Witness. Our Messiah was a Jehovah's Witness. <clears throat> mm -hmm. See this man? He's Jesus Christ, our Lord, a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Just like you. Okay, anyway. Christian witnesses of Jehovah in the first century. Apostle Paul, Apostle John, Timothy, all these people were Jehovah's Witnesses. Martin Luther was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Although he did not know it, because he was a reform... Catholic. Hang on. Okay, ref they're, they're saying here, reformers such as Martin Luther, Ulrich Zwing Zwingli, sorry if I'm getting this wrong, uh, and John Calvin attacked the church on various issues. Luther on the sale of indulgences, which was the, uh, you had to pay to get out of purgatory, 
under the church, and Martin Luther says, there's nothing scriptural about that. Okay. Zwingli, Z Zwingli, I guess, on clerical celibacy, and Mar Marillo RT, RT, I don't know what that is, and Kelvin on the need for the church to return to the original principles of Christianity. They're saying because these, uh, these religious reformists went that way, that they were actually Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they, they did the same thing that Charles Taze Russell did in questioning church doctrine. Oh, look at this. Karl Marx Communist Manifesto actually fostered worship of the state. Charles Darwin's Origin of the Species deeply influenced the scientific and religious thinking of the time. I don't think the Watchtower regards those two guys as Jehovah's Witnesses, but um, it's interesting that they throw Karl Marx and Darwin in here. Oh, but here we go. dun da 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 There. There is our modern Jehovah's Witness right there. The man himself, C.T. Russell, pro proclaiming... I'm trying to read this backward on my thing here. Proclaiming the Lord's Return. 1870 to 1914. And yes, he made many mistakes, but that's okay because he had new light. <sighs> they did try to sell miracle wheat. Uh, George Storrs, a friend and brother. This was when he learned, uh, Russell learned about. Um, the Seventh-day Adventist type thinking. Nelson H. Barbour is in here. But, you know, they if you, re, if you research Russell and Barber, you'll find out why they had the falling out. <laughs> Whereas here, it's just like, oh, you know, they, they were all good buddies, but then, you know, they kind of had a little difference, and off you went. <laughs> yeah, and then you find out what the real difference really was in the doctrines, where Barber was still believing... Uh, Barber still believed in the redemption was coming and Russell changed the direction of when it was coming kind of thing. It's something to that effect. You guys can Google it or write it in the comments if you know. And then here's the, the famous uh, Russell with his Freemasonry um, hand gesture, little uh, how he stands. And it's symbolic meaning, which, of course, to your regular way, lay witness, this is just, oh, a nice picture of Russell standing there giving a sermon. <laughs> but when you when you see those videos where they compare him to, like, the Mason handbook, Freemason's handbook, where they, they show the people standing a certain way because it represents uh, the thing and all that. Yep. Yeah. And then there's all the publications from way back then, the Millennial Dawn, all that stuff. And I wonder if they show the pyramidology in here. There, of course, is the photodrama of creation stuff, <clears throat> which apparently was a really cool show that lasted six hours in the theater. Yeah, no, they, they don't really seem to want to show the uh, pyramidology going on in here. <laughs> anyway. Oh, is it at the back in the reference? No. And they also don't show in here the books in that Millennial Dawn series. They don't show the cover of the book, which has the the Egyptian symbol in the middle with the two wings coming out of it. That was uh, sort of a Egyptian satanic symbol. Okay, so here's the other book I got. I got this back from my sister. I had her um, uh, Crisis of Conscious books, so we traded back again. So here's my Revelation Grand Climax at Hand. And, oh, there's your circuit assembly little pamphlet deal stuck in here. <clears throat> yep. 
Yes. And I could do a, a read through of this sometime. Look here, I studied it all. Marked up my book and everything. <laughs> this is why JW books have no value on the resale market. Part of the reason. But yeah, this is the one that had all that stuff and it got refined and refined and refined and refined and refined. So like, depending on what year of this you have, there'll be different levels of new light. And <laughs> Kim and Mikey have a video on this of how many times they crossed everything out and rewrote in the margins and all that, what the new light was on the, the things. Watchtower has no clue. Jehovah is unmovable. So why should he have new light? Okay, and then I've got some of the bound volumes because I got rid of the magazines to replace with the bound volumes. So this is uh, volume 59 from 78, The Awake. Okay, hang on. We're almost at the end, so. Watchtower 87, Watchtower 78, and the Watchtower 89 bound volumes. <sighs> Staying close to Jehovah's Witness, uh, Jehovah's Organization as told by John Barr. This is one of those testimonial deals. The poor guy passed away. No hope. Practicing godly devotion. What has God done for you? Uh, I always hate going through these bound volumes because I'll flip the pages and then I'll spot something that I could make a commentary on and then it goes by and it's so hard to find what I just saw because it's like the paper thin crummy paper that they used. Okay, so that is my entire collection. Well, with the exception of the stuff that I had from before, which I, I don't know if I'll get into. Ah. <laughs> but anyway, that's my entire collection of what was out there, with the exception of all my tape cassettes of the Watchtower and Awake. And I've got boxes of those. I don't know. Well, at this stage, I hate to say it, I might as well throw out all my old cassettes, including my music ones, like old Van Halen and all that stuff, because... I don't think they're ever going to make the cassette player again. <laughs> and even if they did, you can buy all this stuff on CD and DVD anyway, so what's the point? But anyway, so that's my collection. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And next week we'll get back to some more actual Bible topics. So thanks for tuning in, and until next time, we'll see you again.